long time, but something really special happened while I was at Safeway a few days ago, and I've wanted to share this ever since. I'm going to start out by talking about something that's pretty familiar to all of us, I'm pretty sure, and that is circles. Circles are, are manifolds. That's one way of thinking of them. You can also think of them as the set of all points that are a specified distance from a center. This is a mason jar lid green. Uh, circles are also known as S1, right? S1 is just uh, the conventional name for this set of points as well as the topology described by it. If you want to get a little bit more sophisticated, we can work in um, more than one dimension at a time, in which case we get S2, which is a surface. Um, a spherical surface is everywhere two-dimensional, and so S2 is that two-dimensional manifold that's analogous to our one-dimensional line of points, right? If we want to get a little bit more sophisticated, though, we can actually multiply one manifold by another and create a product space. And one way of doing this, of like multiplying S1 by S1 yields a torus, which is another two-dimensional surface. Um, it's locally two-dimensional, even though you need three dimensions to hold one, uh, to, Im to embed it. And uh, this is kind of a shitty example of a torus. It's actually just a weak plate. It's not, it's not spherical, or sorry, it's not circular everywhere, but you know, a donut shape. Okay, so this is product space. So we have S2, which we can embed in three dimensions, even though the surface is locally two-dimensional everywhere. We've got S1, which we can embed in two dimensions, even though the surface is locally one-dimensional everywhere. But what if we wanted to have a higher dimensional sphere? What if we had a three-dimensional surface, um, which we could embed relatively easily in four dimensions? But what if, we, what if we didn't want to embed it in four dimensions? What if we wanted to play with it in the three-dimensional space in which we live and work and, you know, love and play and so on. It's a little bit trickier. But hop vibrations are one example of this, and they happened to be on clearance at Safeway the other day. I bought all that they had. This is kind of like a circle. It's also kind of like a slinky. But it's kind of like a three-sphere. So the hop vibration, it's, I'm not sure if this is the right terminology, but it's filaments, it's, uh, loops are, are, um, locally circle-like, just like the loops of the helix of a slinky are locally circle-like, right? Like, any, any one section, any one of these can be mapped directly to a circle. And of course, we have a circle here. And we have, you can kind of see, a third, a third uh, factor of, of circleness as we rotate around, around the center. This is kind of a rough and ready way of illustrating how S3 goes into this product space. So, like a torus, You can actually, like, find the middle of the donut of the hot vibration, which is something I've been doing and enjoying the hell out of for, <laughs> for a little while now. So this lovely thing rolls like a ball, but differently. And um, I really, I'm still catching up on the math to describe this wonderful object, but it's a lot like a slinky and it's a lot like a torus and it's actually a lot like this similarly straightforward but delightful latex toy that's just like a latex torus that's kind of shaped like a hot dog or whatever, but if you compress it, it squishes out of its own middle. Since water is incompressible, it doesn't actually get any smaller and yet it changes its shape to the same shape but in a different place if you if you squish it anyway i haven't been able to find out what those toys are called um 
But anyway, the hot vibration is one of the first examples of a fiber bundle to be thoroughly described um, and to um, catch on and like uh, cause the notion of fiber bundles to really take off. Um, in the first half of the 20th century. And so if you're at all interested in um, representation theory or geometry or topology or uh, what I've been studying lately is tensor analysis on manifolds. This is a particularly awesome manifold. Um, then the hot vibration is one you'll probably want to explore. I'm really just getting into it, but I was just so thrilled to discover that they were on clearance at Safeway for half of $7.99. So I bought all that they had, and I'll be sharing them with, um, with a bunch of nerds if it will bring them delight. Thank you.